What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Jeremy Seeks, and I'm coming at y'all again today with another video. And this video is about a couple of things, okay? You know, first and foremost, we need to start this. We need to start this video off by saying God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Now, those of y'all who are Baptist and Kojic, y'all know what I'm talking about. But those of y'all who are aligned with Candace Owens, man, I know what I'm talking about at all. But that's besides the point, baby. Listen, I was at work minding my own business and such. And then I hopped on YouTube. You know, you know, the YouTube that that. You know that that big lady keys with that small ass t that small ass jacket was this Nicki Minaj in. You know, I, I went on the internet that she got on, and then I saw that Candace quit, Robin fired, and then Karen drunk. I was like, oh no, y'all, we got to talk about this. We we got to talk about this. See, I know y'all, I know y'all been looking for me. You know, we'll be at Chicago. You know, I'm here. Period. <laughs> okay now listen let me pull up what i'm talking about so for those of y'all who don't know we just ended a terrible season a terrible 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 season of real housewives of atlanta not housewives of atlanta housewives of potomac you know at the end of the day they black they black we we, we understand what's going on so we're gonna be talking about candace quitting robin being fired <laughs> <clears throat> Hold on, let me turn the let me turn the mic down because I ain't trying to bust y'all eardrums out. Okay. All right. And then Karen being drunk. And then the season the season eight finality. Y'all, I'm gi I'm giving y'all four, four topics. Full review at the end. If y'all don't like if y'all don't hit this like and share this video, I don't know some. Okay. All right. Y'all ready? If y'all ready, put a one in the chat. What's up, all 21 of y'all? What's up, Tay Baby? What's up, Kendrea? Is it Ken is it Kendria or Kendrea? Or is it Kendra? In the like in the E silent. You know, we you know black people, we can be creative with our names and shit. <laughs> all right, y'all. All right, so <laughs> I'm gonna get started. <laughs> What's up, Rashida? How you doing? um okay cool y'all so let me get started so i miss you too d-boy envy i miss i jeremy miss y'all too jeremy miss y'all so much <laughs> okay y'all say y'all ready let's go all right so y'all already know what we gotta do first we gotta share the screen all right and I'm going to try to remember to put this hoe on the screen because y'all know I have a hard time doing that oh, and remembering sometimes that I'll be reading the bitch and the bitch and ain't even on there. Okay, hold on. Let me see. All right. Uh, okay, we here. Okay, so it says, Candace Dillard Bassett exits Real Housewives of Atlanta after season six. Well, after, I mean, I'm sorry, after six seasons, I am filled with gratitude. This is not a farewell, but a see you later. The drive back singer tells the people, look, they already give my they already give my girl her due deals by get by calling her the drive back singer, not calling her the real housewives of Potomac cast member. She already being she already been recognized for her music. You 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 get what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, it's giving what it needs to be gave. All right, but let's continue. Candace Dillard Bassett is saying goodbye to the real housewives of Potomac. The singer who joined the, seas the series in season three tells people exclusively that she won't be returning to the reality series for the upcoming ninth season. As I embark on a new chapter after six remarkable years with the Real Housewives of Potomac, I am filled with gratitude for the enriching friendships, personal growth, and moments of introspection that have defined this journey. Dillard Bassett 37 says, with a whirlwind of new opportunities and responsibilities on my plate, I have decided to take a break from Real Housewives of Potomac. She goes on to tease that her exit might be temporary, noting this is not a farewell, but a see you later. The Dryback songstress ends her note with a message of thanks to her fans. Your unwavering support has been guiding my life, and I look forward 
to the exciting adventures that lie ahead. And more importantly, sharing them all with you, she says. Now look, y'all. I'm sad. Now I'm sad about this. I am sad. Now, those of y'all who don't know, I have been Team Candace on this show, you know, almost since the beginning. You know, when um, Candace came on to the show, I, you know, I loved her character. She reminded me a lot of myself. You know, I was able to identify with her on a lot of levels. You know, my mama ain't rich or anything else like that, of course, but you get what I'm saying. But I was realizing as seasons progressed that she was not being, you know, appreciated as she should have. You know, Candace brings reads, Candace brings laughs, she brings sass, wit, she's sharp, all of these things. And, you know, in most cases, she could be fashionable. Now, sometimes those wigs and sometimes uh, some of those garments can be a little questionable. But at the end of the day, she gives us the fashions too. Like Candace checked every box, for, you know, in being a housewife. And I felt that as seasons progressed, especially after season five, you know, that she was not really treated as she should have. And I thought that she was unfairly, you know, judged and unfairly edited. Like, I feel that, you know, this whole season of seeing people literally gaslight Candace and tell her that she's doing too much, that she needs to get over it, or that she's doing this and she's doing that. Meanwhile, y'all cru crucify her for saying the slightest things. For Y'all crucify her for saying, yo, mama. But y'all allow Giselle, Ashley, and God knows who else to say whatever they want to say to these women. And, that's, and it's been completely unfair. And not only that, but the season has gotten so bad that Essence magazine, you know, the, one of the one of the arc, you know, the arc architects of, you know, black media has gotten so, you know, gotten so enthralled in the drama that they decided to make a whole article breaking down the issues that Potomac has, including colorism, you know, featureism. And favoritism. You know, it's a lot of isms on there. Okay. But I, I'm a little bit, you know, disheartened to hear that she's leaving, you know, but at the end of the day, I hope, and I know for a fact, I'm not even going to hope. I know that Candace is going to like do her, do, you know, do her thing. She's going to like win. She's going to continue to be in a lot of places because regardless on whatever the, you know, the racist or the colorist fan base has to say about Candace or you hood boogers out there that like to fight first and ask questions later, you know, uh, Candace is well liked especially in professional in professional aspects like majority of the people who's worked with Candace says that she's you know great to work with you know Angela Angela Yee brought her on the show she's doing multiple television shows right now she's getting in movies she's doing music she's getting invited to Grammy parties she's a part of the Grammy Association I think now or the Grammy committee one of the two I don't know what that how that set up but you get what I'm saying like she's going to do she's going to do well and she didn't really need the show the show honestly really needed her so I'm really happy to see her leaving on a high note instead of you know drudging on season after season after season and leaving when you absolutely have nothing else left going on I think it's really good to leave at a high note when you have like the world at your fingertips and you can go and do so many more things springboard you can have time to have personal growth you know professional growth then come back if you know if you want to and that way you can show everything else that has changed since the time that you left and you can also show that personal you know maturity and things like that that you have gained as the years progressed you know that's that's how i feel about it you know but overall Overall, I'm kind of, I'm kind of, you know, sad to see Candace go because, like, at the end of the day, y'all girls gonna have to work. Y'all gonna have to work, okay? Ain't no more getting by. Ain't no, ain't no more just blaming it on Candace and just thinking that that's gonna be your storyline for the season. Ain't no more fighting with Candace, picking fights with Candace, lying on Candace, lying on Candace's husband, lying on Candace's husband, penis and everything else, and think that y'all gonna have a storyline. Baby, no, Candace is going and to be honest. And if we being clear and fair here, Candace has been the topic of discussion majority of the seasons that she has been featured in. 
Can't say the same for most of you other hoes, okay? But yes, y'all. As you know, uh, as 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 we say goodbye to Candace, uh, let's sing a a a, a selection. We won't do B because we don't want to give the girls too much. But you know, uh, let me see what I have in my spirit. Uh, it's so hard mm, to say goodbye to yesterday. Mm-mm-mm. all right i think i think we close it out y'all period okay now next topic y'all but uh, but you know if, if you know if one thing god won't do if one thing god won't do god will move and he will move mountains and he would you know he will move molehill now is it is it he make is it making mountains out of a molehill it's some shit like that. I promise you it is. I'm now don't look look here, ho. Don't be out here, you know, checking me on my Bible scripture, you know, memorization. I'm just trying to tell y'all what the hell is going on. So at the end of the day, I came online and I saw that Robin Bartholomew, you know, Carlos, you know, William Lee, um, Bertram, uh, you know, Beethoven Dixon was exiting the Real Housewives of Potomac. Now let's read this. And this is coming from reality. Now, if y'all don't, if y'all don't see the difference in this, like this is this is how y'all were like, y'all were like looked at. Like Candace got a whole spread in People magazine about this, about her exiting and her basically breaking the news. And you got fired, Robin. And they talking about this on reality T. Like, girl, you are a loser. <laughs> But let me continue. All right. So it says, the Real Housewives of Potomac is losing one of its green-eyed bandits. The rumor is out that Robin, who has been part of the cast since the beginning, is leaving the show. This is following the shocking news that Candace Dillard Bassett has also exited RHOP. As I embark on my new chapter after six remarkable years with the Real Housewives of Potomac, I am filled with gratitude for the enriching friendships, personal growth, and moments of introspection that have defined this journey, Candace said. Her feud with Robin and Giselle Bryant certainly could be a factor in her decision to peace out. Now, the Jasmine brand reported that Robin is that Robin is leaving Real Housewives of Potomac. While Robin may be sitting out next season, she could return for seasons later on or at least make some appearances on the show. Robin's storyline on that show has always centered around her love for Juan Dixon. The couple was divorced when the show debuted. The duo fought their way through financial hardship and Juan's non-stop cheating scandals now i added the non-stop in there but the cheating scandals is in there period but at the end of the day non-stop is what it was but i continue all right so in august 2022 robin and juan tied the knot again with two sons corey and carter in attendance season eight proved to be a rough to be rough for the pair as they deny rumors that juan cheated again Robin allegedly did her best to keep that storyline off camera, but she finally admitted it ahead of the season eight that Juan had a sus communication with a woman on social media. Now, while on the show, Robin also showcased her business oriented side. She started a hat line called Embellishment that ain't nobody fucking buying. She experimented with flipping houses that she ain't doing no motherfucking mo. And Robin was also a co-founder of a skincare line called Glow RX. Now, who the fuck wants skin like Robin's? I don't know. I really don't, but I'll continue. She even worked on an upcoming franchise for a skincare studio called Glow 30. Now, at the end of the day, it's funny that you calling this shit Glow 30 when you look double that, Robin, and you only half that. So I don't know why we out here looking for skincare from Robin Dixon. Like, you know, if I need to know how to lay in the bed and not take showers for a couple of weeks, I can go to Robin about that, you know, how to do that successfully. But, you know, growing the business, you know, yeah, she may have made some old satin, old ass embellishment hats that nobody fucking buying no more. She may have flipped a couple houses a couple times and shit like that to pay her bills. But at the end of the day, Robin ain't no business woman. She ain't no business, Kwame. 
So I don't know what they trying to build up in this. But at the end of the day, I heard through the great vine that she was fired, that she was not leaving. I heard that Robin Dixon was getting fired. That's what I heard because once again, she has nothing to contribute to the show besides being up Giselle's asshole. But um, also when the reunion came after this whole season, her man wasn't there. And unfortunately for Robin, her man don't have a job no more. So his ass don't have no excuse as to why his ass was not at that reunion. So at the end of the day, after all this is said and done, Robin is now about to be off of the show. And I guarantee you, after Robin is completely off of the show, Juan is going to be out the door because he didn't want her any more anyway. How much y'all want to bet about that? I can guarantee you by the, you know, by, by the broad shoulders that, you know, that she may or may not have that Juan will not be sticking around. And you would think that Juan would want to stick around since his ass ain't got no job. What is you doing? And I, and you know, I saw, I saw the last episode when you know Robin was talking about Glow Thirty One, talking about you know I could manage this shit for you know Juan. You can go and get your ass a job. You can go get your ass a job, Juan. But we don't need you to be working in Glow Thirty, because at the end of the day, what Robin hasn't glowed in thirty years. The, it's so funny how that glow 30 has two has you know double entendre meanings because we haven't seen robin have a glow since her and uh ones you know kmart or you know jc penny's you know uh uh you know couples pictures back in the day we haven't seen we haven't seen no glowing since then every year he chipped a piece of your soul away robin and it's time for you to leave this show, find yourself again, and realize that you are the lesbian that you always should have been. And then you could come back as a revitalized, refreshed version of yourself that is outside of Giselle's ass crack. Okay? That's what we want for Robin. That's what I want for her next season. And for the rest of the seasons, therefore, after, we do not want to see you again, Robin. At least not for, you know, maybe 15 years. We can check back in with you in about a decade and see how you're doing. Check on the kids, you know, see how Cordo and, you know, Cordero doing. But at the end of the day, Robin, we not here for you. Okay. We would rather you go. Uh, we do think that you're a loser. And we do think that Juan is a freaky loser who may or may not be allegedly banging out Ashley's current husband, quote unquote, ex-husband, quote unquote. We don't know what the fuck going on because it is... <clears throat> I'm sorry. Hold on. I forgot to, you know, update y'all on the date. It is March 25th, 2002. I mean, 2024 at 624 p.m. right now. And Ashley Darby is still not divorced, nor has she filed for divorce from Michael Darby. OK, it is, you know, it's a mess we going on a foot. It, it, it is a mess we going on a foot. And Ashley. I'm gonna be getting in your ass at this uh at this re uh fi finale I think finale uh uh review I'm about to do, but we gonna get in your ass for real today. But anyway, let's continue. So y'all, yeah, the so you know that so that's what they saying about Robin. They saying Robin ain't gonna be on the show no more. But at the end of the day, I'm really happy. You know, um maybe maybe Robin can use her strong shoulders for something else. Maybe she can get into construction work. You know, maybe she can get into football, you know, maybe she can get into, you know, to Harlem shaking all across, you know, the, the New York streets. You know, it's some TikTokers that like to do that. Maybe she can hop in on that because she does have very strong shoulders. You know, she could do something, you know, but being on the Real Housewives of Potomac is not something that we want you to be a part of anymore. Rebellious. So uh, we wish you would do. OK. Now I, I really now I really hate that you have allowed Juan to put everything on your shoulders. All of these years, you have you have been holding a world on your shoulders that they have become so broad and muscular and bulky that you have gotten so upset at everybody else who has a happy marriage. I hate that for you, Robin. But at the end of the day, please put those shoulders to work for something else that could be better used for them, like construction work. You know, we need a we need more trash men out here. I I I got to tell you the trash men has been picking the trash up pretty late. 
on a Thursday. Okay. I don't know when the day the, the trash is picked up for y'all, but for us, it's Thursday. And I can tell you, we can use Robin Strong Gas to come and pick up that trash while I'm on my way to work. Because I'm tired of coming back home at 5 p.m. and the trash is not dumped yet. So, Robin, if you need if you need a job, you know it's the trash man is hiring, you know. And I saw Andy brought a couple trash men on, you know, watch what happens live. So you could probably, you know, still get invited on there here and there, you know. You you got it. You know, and Juan been telling you to get up out the bed and take a shower. So this be like, you know, now you have a reason to get out the bed and then come home and shower, you know, as well. So th this could possibly fix your marriage, honestly. But yes, y'all, that's what they said. That's look, I, I'm just I'm just reporting what they said, girl. It is not my fault. It is not my fault. However, let's bid you adieu, Robin. Um let 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 you know, let's see let's let's you know let's see a song that we can sing for robin robin's way out you's a liar cheater son of a i'm tired of something and y'all know about them girls out there and, uh, and, and it's some sheets powder laundry mat something clothes get the hell out your man's Cheating something. Uh, I'm taking to the laundry. Okay, so y'all like that was our that was our exit song for Robin. Okay, so yeah, y'all like you know so that's really it for her. So let's move on, y'all. So at the end of the day, y'all, I hate. Well, I don't really hate to talk about this, but you know it 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 it, it bothers me. It, it, you know, it bothers me. It, it, it bothers me because at the end of the day, nobody wants to talk about these type of things, you know, when they come up. You, you, you get what I'm saying? No, like nobody wants to talk about DUIs and things like that. Honestly, and, I, and I'm not going to try to like, you know, bring the mood down. But to be like, to be fair, y'all, um, y'all don't know, but I had a friend who um, was unalived because he was hit by a drunk driver. It was a head on collision. And my, and I'm talking about one of my closest friends, my closest friend, I'm not gonna say one of, my closest friend of like 14 years. He's been, he on a, he was unalived in 2022. So I take this, I take this situation shit seriously, but I'm gonna try my best to be light about this, okay? Now it says, Karen Huger, Hold on, let me see if I can find. Okay, so we can go to Los Angeles Times first. All right, so we're going to go here. So it says, Karen Huger of Real Housewives of Potomac arrested, cited, in DUI crash. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Maryland police arrested Real Housewives of Potomac star Karen Huger and cited her for driving under the influence after she crashed her Maserati late Tuesday. A spokesperson for the for the Montgomery County Police Department confirmed to the um, confirmed to the Times. Why is they confirming stuff to the like to the like what? That that officers reported to the site of a single vehicle collision in Potomac at approximately 11:50 p.m. local time. The driver, whom police identified as Huger, age 60, had crossed a median and hit street signs. Officers said. Police said Huger was arrested and cited for driving under the influence and other traffic violations. She was later released from police custody. Representatives for Huger, who has been part of the Potomac cast since 2016, did not immediately respond to the Times request for comment. Bravo also did not immediately respond to inquiry from the Times. Huger broke her silence. Mm, such a strong woman. You know, um, silence Wednesday, attributing the accident to grief over her mother's 2017, you know, death. She says, um, with the passing of my beloved mother, grief comes and goes in waves. With the Mother's Day approaching, it has felt more like a tsunami. You know, um... All right, so she says, so she said on her website, I guess... Huger told the website, which broke the news of the incident, that she and a friend had discussed very emotional sensitive. Okay, y'all, so wait. I actually have her statement here. 
So I'm going to go and read that verbatim real quick. I <clears throat> mean, me, 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 me. Okay, so it says, <clears throat> last night, I met a girlfriend for dinner. We talked and brought up some very emotional and sensitive topics. I was crying on my way home and I saw a car heading right for me. I swerved to avoid the head-on collision. Hit the divider and then the tree. I'm hurt. Bruised up a bit. But so grateful I'm alive. I did not I did receive citations, one of which was unrelated to the incident, which was understandable. But what was most surprising is that the car that almost hit me drove away. She told the outlet. She continued to say, I would like to stress. It's... <laughs> I would like to stress. I'm sorry. <laughs> Carrying full of shit. <clears throat> I'm sorry. <clears throat> I would like to stress. It's important to understand your emotional state when driving. <laughs> and may this be a reminder to all those to use their seatbelts. My mother may be my guardian angel, but the seatbelt saved my life. <laughs> Karen, you ain't shit. You ain't shit, Karen. You a liar. You a liar. You lie. Let me continue this tab, child. So it says very emotionally sensitive topics during a crash. Um, um, during a dinner before the crash, she said that she was crying on the way home from the dinner. She saw another vehicle headed right for me, and swerved to avoid a collision. Huger's statement added that she hit the driver and then a tree. The person in the other car drove away, she alleged in her statement. The star confirmed that she received citations, but said that one of them was unrelated to the incident. It probably was that one about her having unregistered, <laughs> like, you know, expired registration. I ain't even mad at you, Karen, because sometimes I forget, you know, I forget to, you know, get my registration renewed. Okay, period. And sometimes you got to pay that property tax before and you forgot to pay your property tax. So you got to pay your property tax then you got to go to the dmv to get the to get the whole place off your account after you pay the property tax and then you got to pay the late fee and then you got to pay what you got to pay to get your registration renewed it's 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 a it's a lot okay she did not share additional details she urged drivers to understand your emotional state before getting behind the wheel and to remember to fasten their seat belts. She continued, my mother may be my guardian angel, but the seat belt saved my life. God, goodness gracious. Now, y'all, I believe Karen is full of shit. I do. But I can't necessarily prove it. Like Karen is playing, Karen is playing a dangerous game, y'all. Like getting in, getting behind the the wheel of a vehicle while intoxicated is really dangerous, y'all. And I really want us to take some, to take you know, to take this as as a very serious topic that we're talking about. Okay, like I'm I'm telling y'all for real from very much experience. Those of y'all who've been following this channel for a year or or more knows last year I was struggling. After my after my best friend passed from a drunk driving incident, like I I was going through it, and I just recently just got I, I got over the hump, child. So yeah, let I'm happy that Karen is alive. I'm happy that nobody else was hurt. I'm happy you know that she's still here. But hold on, wait a minute, hold hold up hold up hold up hold up. They said they got they got pictures. And photos from the crash site? Hold on. So it says, Karen Huger's scary Tuesday night crash seemed to have left his mark on the area. Child, now she leaving marks on the area. With the first photos from the scene appearing to show just how close Karen came to the disaster, the pics obtained by TMZ shows a real housewife star swerved off the road in Potomac, Maryland, leaving lots of skids and torn up grass before slamming into a tree, taking a big chunk of the bark with her. We've confirmed these were taken at the specific locations mentioned in the court docket that laid out all of Karen's charges and traffic violations. Oh, so you can see the tire tracks. 
Oh, okay. So you can see the tire. So you can see the tire tracks, and you see that big chunk out of that out of that tree. So, so Karen, you hurting trees now? You hurting trees, Karen? Do you know how much carbon monoxide is in the, is in the air right now, Karen? You cannot be hurting trees. Plants and trees eat up carbon dioxide and put out oxygen for us to breathe, Karen. Okay? The photos and videos we got give a clear indication of how serious the wreck was. Honing in on a point of contact where Karen went off the roadway, which she said she did to avoid an oncoming car. You know, this, <laughs> this after having a very emotional dinner with a friend of hers. Police, however, tell a different story. Child, the police is calling everybody. <laughs> Child, the police is calling everybody. When the police start calling the tabloids, Child is calling everybody. Okay, the police department now offering another update on what they say went down after Karen had her accident. Karen looks so cute in this photo. You better, you better pout, sis. Yes. You drunk, my drunk queen. Okay, yes. Alcoholics. Slay. All right. As we reported, cops had told us Karen hit the median in a street sign late Tuesday night while driving her 2017 Maserati. And we're told a security guard in the neighborhood saw the whole thing and called the police. A MCPD rep says fire and rescue police officers responded to the call with an ambulance, but Police say Huger refused to go to the hospital or be evaluated. Oh my gosh. Now, now my question is like, why, why, why do we need to see the girls in bikinis while, you know, why, you know, why they're why, what? Okay, I'm look, I'm not mad at it. I'm just trying to how do like you know, how did I go from a, a tree getting hit by a car with a drunk driver in it to titties in my face? I, I'm just I'm just I'm confused with the transition, TMZ. Okay, so it's told we're told Karen Huger was taken into custody and transported to a district station with police telling us she was actually arrested and cited for DUI that evening, but wasn't booked into their jail. Instead, they tell us she was released to her husband, Raymond. Raymond, okay? As, as y'all know him as Ray on the show. All right, so Karen was also cited for other traffic violations before being released. Huger hasn't addressed the DUI, DWI charges yet. The only thing she mentioned to us Wednesday was a car going straight to her. While, while she was driving, which she says caused her to swerve to dodge it, explaining she rem I'm sure she miraculously walked away without injuries. Given how the crash scene looks, Huger may actually have a guardian angel on her side, like she says. Child, I'm 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 confused. <laughs> this is crazy, y'all. This like this wow, this wow. But at the end of the day, if Karen Huger, is, if this is true about you actually driving under the influence and you truthfully not really dodging no car and you actually lying about this and really, you know, being reckless behind the wheel, I hope that you are held fully accountable by this court of law. And I hope that they hold you accountable on the show as well. You're not above reproach at all. Like. I know you know the girls like you, and you know it's Kellen Huga, you know the grand dame. But at the end of the day, somebody could have seriously been hurt, Karen. I'm happy that you're okay, and nobody else was hurt in the midst of this. And if you know the C, if if the MCPD is out here being messy, you know, and they not telling the complete truth, you know, I hope Candace gets her justice. I mean, I mean, Karen gets her justice and she's able to tell her story and the video can reflect that. And if, you know, Karen is lying, I hope that, you know, she's held fully accountable in the court of law, period. Okay. Now, I, now I ain't gonna hold you and I'm not trying to be messy about this, y'all. 
But but the most but the most surprising I mean surprising thing about this for me was the fact that Ray was the one who picked her up. I re- y'all I really thought that Ray and her was like you know those old people that be in relationships that like like live in different houses, live in different countries, you know, sleep in di- sleep in different bedrooms, but they just still married. Like that's how you know he really loved her. He loved himself from current, okay? He came up in the middle of the night, picked his girl up from the jailhouse and took her home. Baby girl didn't even have to go to jail, okay? She didn't even have to get booked because her man came and did what he had to do. So blue eyes or whoever you was that was supposed to be driving Karen and you did not do it tonight, shame on you, okay? And that's why Karen got a real man in her life, period, okay? Now listen... (laughs) That's it for those topics, y'all. Now we have to move on. We got to move on. We got to move on. Now, now that we moving on, I can show myself, period. Okay? Now, uh, 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 let me hide this. Now, I want to say this. All right? I want to say this. Give me a second. Let me. Let me lower myself. Let me let me uh you know adjust the lighting a little bit. What do I do? I think I look pretty good. All right. So now y'all, we gonna talk about the Real Housewives of Potomac season finale. Okay. Put a one in the chat when y'all ready for us to discuss this. Put a one in the chat if y'all ready for me to discuss it. Hold on. Also, I gotta let me let me turn the light on in the back. Child, I was not prepared. To, I was not planning on coming on, you know, live, but I figured because I'm doing a review that I might as well. Okay. So I'll do that. I'll uh I'll do that. Well, let's see. Period. All right, and then I'll turn the other one on. All right. Oh, y'all and 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 y'all before I before I like move on to the you know to the next topic, please be aware that um on Thursday night after the um after chasing reality on um on the chasing reality panel for those of y'all who have found me because of that, um I will be back on the panel with Scotty, Carl, Tremel, Jamar, Dar- and, and T. All of us you know, uh, cutting up and acting up. And I do plan on doing so, okay? And everything I say in the review, I stand by it, okay? Before and after the season ends, I'm letting y'all know anything I say, I'm gonna stand on it, okay? Now let's continue. Now y'all, we pick up where the last, where the last episode left off, which we saw a wild Deborah while Deborah come up to Candace, come up to Candace and, you know, say, you know, anything you want to say to me. And Candace up like, no, I don't talk to Muppets. You know, at the end of the day, no, I don't know. So this girl decides to fling her drink at Candace. Kiana try to swat her away, mushes her away, and then she throws a glass and hits Kiana in the face, y'all. Boy, Kiana start to scrap it in that B. Kiana start to scrap it in that B. She was not playing. She was tagging, ta- ta- tagging Deborah, right? And then Ashley's other friend, you know, who's a part of the PYTs, you know, pretty young, you know, pretty young Triceratops, you know, uh, you know, her little gang gang that she likes to hang out with. One of them with a dry ass ponytail pulls Kiana by her hair, drags her to the ground, and then they proceed to jump. My good sis. Hell no. So we pick up now where we see that now they've been separated. We can hear, we can hear like the, um, the audio and the cameras are now back on, right? The cameras are now back on. And you can see that now they have taken Kiana to the bathroom. Wendy is pissed. Wendy up there like, she needs to get up out of here. I cannot believe that she did that. She threw a drink on Candace. Can you believe she did that? And then she just hit Kiana. Like it was, it was that bad. And here y'all, and here, and y'all, 
I want to tell y'all right now, if you don't like profanity, if you don't like profanity, baby, I'm giving you 10 seconds to exit because it's about to get ugly in this bitch. Okay, I'm letting you know right now. I am very sophisticated. I am very, you know, college educated. But however, I'm about to cut the fuck up right now. Okay? Seven, six, five, four, three, two. All right. Now, Ashley, you big headed bitch. How dare you? Ashley is in the motherfucking bathroom like, oh my God, what happened? How did they even get like that? First of all, you big head hoe, you know exactly what happened. What's up, Sakina? What's up, my Pisces sister? How you doing? You know exactly what happened, Ashley. You up here talking about you don't know what happened. You didn't see anything. Oh my God, how did that happen? And then you're trying to allude, y'all, she's trying to allude in the confessionals that this is Candace's fault. And then she's also trying to like bring up a fact that Candace picked up a champagne bottle. At the end of the day, bitch, if she decides to pick up a motherfucking grenade launcher, she can because it's in a way to defend herself. Nobody told your yo nobody told your animalistic face ass fucking friend to go over to that place that she's not welcome and try to talk in their in their area. Nobody wants to talk to Deborah. At this point, I don't even think Deborah's husband wants to deal with her. Where's your kids, Deborah? How the fuck did you go from being a being a housewife and a mom? Cause that's where the fuck we met you at, and you know, in Michael Darby's dirty ass motherfucking uh uh, uh you know penthouse, we 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 saw you there, and you was talking about being a motherfucking mom. You had your hair in some nasty ass cornrows, and you like so 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 now you out here popping up to events in you know in you know fight clothing mind you everybody else dressed nice at this tacky ass event except deborah deborah is dressed like she wore one of the outfits from the gna collection that's what she was dressed like she was dressed like she was wearing some of the outfit like she was wearing one of the collection pieces i was like baby if she don't look like a cheap ass gna mess i don't know what's what it is and the thing about it is Deborah had her hair tied up too. So you came with your hair undone. You came here with, you know, with a body suit and you came here with a hard face in tennis shoes to come and do what girl, what was you going to do? You came to do what? Get beat up, embarrass yourself, look like a Muppet, look crazy, look like you belong on Sesame street, girl. You at the end of the day, I'm like, it, it really bothers me how Ashley gets away with this shit, y'all. It really does. Hold on. Let me put this over here. Whew, okay. Let me calm down because we just getting started. So we're in the bathroom. We're all trying to see what happens. Karen is taking the mom approach. So Karen is like, we need to call Karen's parents, let her know what, let them know what's going on, that she's going to the hospital. Karen is saying, we need an ambulance. Karen is bleeding from her fucking face. Karen is ble bleeding from her face. But Karen is taking it like a G. You can tell, like, you know, growing up as uh, growing up in Baltimore, baby, uh, Karen would probably hit a few licks, okay, in her in her day. So, you know, she was bleeding, but she wasn't on he, she was she didn't crumble. Okay. She was like, okay, you may have hit me with that glass, but I whooped your ass. And I could have kept whooping your ass if your girls didn't jump me. And the thing about you, Ashley, is that you sit and you sit in the confessionals and you talk all that shit and you make all of these assumptions. And, and as soon as this shit started, you tried to try to try to figure out, figure out a way to blame Candace. It's, you know, Candace picked up a bottle. Candace was saying something. It had to be can you know, Candace, because at the end of the day, bitch, we all know what the, we all know what was really going down. You brought her there. You brought her there. You brought her there because you wanted her to approach Candace. You didn't, you, you just did not plan on her getting into it with, Ke um, to, uh, what's her name? Kiana. 
You didn't plan on that being there. And you know that Deborah has no problems with Kiana. But Kiana had, you know, you know, got into that scuffle. And now it and now it was been brought up a whole different level because you assume that, you know, people hitting Candace is accepted. Oh, yeah, we can hit the black bitch. You know, don't nobody care about that. So you bring your friends around who lied on her husband. And mind you, Ashley kept on saying this, y'all. Ashley kept on saying this. You know, you know, she was calling her vermin. She was calling her the help. She was saying all of these things. And you just know just sometimes you just gotta, you know, sometimes when you hit below the belt, things happen. So fuck you, Ashley. Because at the end of the day, the only reason somebody had anything to say about your fugly ass friend is because your fugly ass friend decided to lie on her husband. If your friend who is facially challenged would have stayed in the facially challenged place, then we wouldn't have these issues. See, I remember the good old days where fat people and ugly people, they were extremely kind. You know, and, and you know, where I grew up in, now I'm not fat shaming or anything else like that. We, you know, beauty is in all shapes and sizes. But I'm just saying how I grew up, like, you know, ugly people were nice. People who were facially challenged were nice. And, you know, a lot of the, you know, a lot of larger women were nice too. I like, when I, when I was like six, seven years old, it was always some, you know, some big bone ladies, you know, giving me treats and stuff. You know, nowadays, you know, nowadays, you know, it's not like that. The world has changed. But then again, you ain't got to be nice because you're big. But I definitely do think it's crazy how you can be ugly on the outside and the inside at the same time. But somehow Deborah does it all. Not only are you facially challenged, but you facially challenged spiritually as well, Deborah. Because nobody told you to lie on, that, on, that, on this lady's husband. You decided to do that. So at any point after that, you're fair play. So you wanted to act like her husband was sitting here coming at you, you know, like, oh, girl, you so sexy. You so fine. You know, let me talk to you. And then the cameras played it back. And that man didn't even look your way. They, they, they didn't even look your way. You know? You know, and the only thing that we can talk about, which is the obvious thing here is that, you know, we have this woman making it seem as if she's so attractive that my man would want to be with her. And Candace is only doing what the Lord told her to do, which is tell the truth, which is that Deborah, you are ugly as hell. Baby girl, you are facially challenged. Baby girl, you're, you're it, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like God, you know, was at, at one point got tired of making people the regular way that he usually makes them. So he put a blindfold on and he basically told his angels to just hold the body structure and just threw a whole bunch of facial features at it. You know, just picked up some stuff out of the bag and just threw it at your face. That's what it looks like, Deborah. And that's all Candace was trying to get you to understand. So because you look like that, baby, my man would never want you. My man would never talk to you. My man was never flirting with you because he comes home to a bad bitch. Okay? So he would have nothing to do with a Deborah. Now, moving on from that situation, child. We are at we are at the Monarch event. We're at the Monarch event, y'all. We see Karen, we see Karen walking in with her husband. Karen is like, you know, it's been a very hard couple of days, but you know, I'm here. And at the end of the day, you know, we have some things to talk about. We have to, we have to get everything put together and we have to say everything that is on our mind about what happened two days ago. You know, that's what Karen had to tell us. Now, you know, we see everybody else come again. We see, you know, we see Candace come in with her blonde wig. We see <laughs> Wendy come in with a matching blonde wig. I was like, wait, not y'all wigs identical twins or sisters. I was like, not we sisterhood of the traveling wigs. What's going on? But not to, I'm just kidding, but they both look good. They both look good. Everybody look good. You know, Ashley's there. 
you know, Ashley goes over to Karen and then she was like, oh yeah, you know, uh, you know, I had a couple, had, had a hard couple of days, you know, it's been really rough. You know, my phone has been ringing off the hook. I haven't gotten a chance to talk to anybody. You know, Karen sent basically looking at this whole like, uh-huh, big head hoe. But you know, Karen doesn't really say it, but Karen lets us know that she feels that what Deborah did was thirsty behavior. What Deborah did, was attention seeking what deborah did was lie on somebody's husband so she has no reason to be upset with the response that she got from said wife a husband who she lied on it's only common sense but everybody else gets it except for fucking robin giselle and ashley surprise surprise are we surprised anyway let's continue so we see Ashley go over to Candace's sister. Now, at this point, I'm up here like, this bitch must be very bold to go over to somebody's sister of the person who friend, you know, uh, uh, yo, yo, you know, your friend hit. So I'm up here looking at, you know, looking at Candace's sister. I'm like, okay, so when you gonna hit this bitch? But then I had to think about it. Candace don't want to be embarrassed like that by no by her family members. So I was like, okay, so she ain't looking at it like that. But the girl basically let Ashley know she see her friend out on the street. She gonna whoop her friend ass. So Ashley's up there like, okay, I understand that. Um, my thing is this. Um, Miss Candace's sister, I a hundred percent understand you wanting to you know, whoop Deborah's ass, but I, I, you know, I feel that we need to really remind you that Deborah has the strength of 10 men, that Deborah's are grown in the wild of the Serengeti, that Deborah's are, you know, are a part of the mammal, you know, a mammal group of, you know, the, 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 um, the Triceratai uh, a mammal mammalian group, you know, that, that, that Deborah is a part of that. So if you do decide to fight said Deborah, I, I advise that you do make sure that you go and get some animal tranquilizers. Some of those bear tranquilizers or those lion or tiger tranquilizers, because I do know that some people says say that they're not scared of lions and tigers and bears but i do believe however that we should all be wary and fearful of a deborah okay because they are wilder than any animal that i have named previously okay <laughs> i'll continue <laughs> <laughs> I make myself laugh. Okay, let's move on. So they're all there, y'all. They they like everybody's everybody's coming, you know, you know, saying hi to y'all. I was like, if I hear one more person say hi, it was like, hi, oh my god, hi, oh my god, hi. And then we see, and then we see uh Cherise come in with a damn boot with her daughter, and she's up there like, oh my god. Like, when you're supposed to be, is, is Karen supposed to be uh, Anita Baker? It's like, who is Karen supposed to be? Like, her daughter was like Marilyn Monroe, mom. She was like, Marilyn Monroe, you know, she can be that, you know, but, I, you know, um, and I also am wearing a boot because the melee, it was just so much. And I was like, what? I was like, I don't remember Cherise really being in the melee like that, but we can watch the video again after all of this is done. You know, after I finish this review, we can look at the video real quick and analyze again what we saw that was happening. Now, ciao. Y'all, can I say this real quick? Can I say this real quick? Who else thought that when, when Gordon picked up that microphone to make that speech, y'all, I don't know why. I don't know why the production had me thinking Gordon was going to be up here like, hey, everybody, I just want y'all to raise a toast, raise a toast. OK, lift your glass up and let me say something about my wife. OK, my wife is a dirty ass hoe. You know, she's a gold digger who cheated on me with five other niggas. And on top of that, I don't feel like my son is mine. Another nigga is claiming that he and that he's my son's daddy, 
And you know, after the money got funny, so did the bitch. So like, I thought that's what he was gonna say, y'all. I promise y'all. I could have sworn that he was gonna pick up that mic and light her ass up in front of the whole building. That would have been so good TV. That would have been priceless, y'all. If he would have did that, that would have took <laughs> that would have took that uh that episode from here to there. Okay. Now look. So Ashley goes over to Sharice, and now we see Giselle and uh, you know, her stylist Cal. Now I was like, you know, Cal, I don't like you, nigga. You know, you talking a lot of shit. Now, I, 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 I really do not like Cal. Because I was like, you talking about what Candace should and should not do. But nigga, why are you dressed like a young Levon Zant? Nigga, why do you have that headpiece on? How does that stuff complement your outfit? And how come you a stylist and Giselle has been looking fucked up? For multiple seasons what are you doing so instead of you telling us what candace should be prepared for how about you be prepared to actually style the woman that you're getting paid to motherfucking style because she coming on the show looking any motherfucking type of way you should be ashamed of yourself you should be ashamed of yourself kyle cal whatever the fuck your name is because y'all nobody else had a stylist except for except for giselle y'all except for giselle Okay, nobody else had a stylist except for Giselle. Giselle came on this show having a stylist who did her hair and her makeup. And my thing is this: now I understand that we all, you know, that we all, you know, uh, 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 uh what's what, 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 what do you call it? We all evolve as the times progress, as each year passes. So your hair get better, your makeup get better, and you doing all of this shit. But my thing is this, you a whole fucking stylist. D, you wasn't, you ain't one of the housewives. You, you know, like, so the housewives who doing that shit themselves, they end up getting a stylist and then end up looking better. You were styling her before. So you was putting them like those tacky ass wigs on her head and telling her that it was giving fashion. Cow. You was telling me you was in the industry of style, you know, in the industry of hair, you know, cosmetology and stuff like that. And you were putting those and, and you were in the market. You knew what a you knew what a good wig looked like, but you never gave Giselle one. But you want to sit here and tell us what Candace should and should not be doing with her with her champagne bottle. Anyway, I'm gonna continue real quick. All right, so they said like um this is when uh, Giselle basically lets us know that after the whole melee at the party, you know, well, at the event, that Ashley called her. I was like, Ashley, you ain't shit, bitch. Like, now, I don't even like Giselle like that, y'all. I don't even fuck with Giselle like that. And y'all know I believe that she has stovepipe legs and lymph deep ankles. But at the end of the day, like i just don't think that you know after she leaves the party when she finds out her father has you know well not finds out well when she's dealing with the fact that her father is battling brain cancer that the first thing that i need to do is call her with some bullshit that happened at our party or what happened at our event like i'm just saying can you just spare her a little bit out and keep her out of the bullshit, please like like she's already dealing with enough ashley but ashley is demonic ashley is one of those little evil ass keebler elves you know she's one of those like fucking have y'all ever seen like leprechaun from the hood my man showed me that um showed me that um that movie the other day y'all and i was like ashley darby ashley darby y'all act look look i'm not saying that they look alike i'm saying that ashley darby and the leprechaun could be a part of the same same race okay she either an evil elf or one of those like vengeful 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 leprechauns because all ashley does is spread mischief wherever she goes and tries to take people coins that's all she really does if y'all really pay attention to it, Ashley, you know, Ashley is definitely giving me evil ass leprechaun or evil ass Keebler elf. Okay. And I saw him kill a, a lot of motherfuckers over, over some gold coins and he'll do anything over those gold coins. 
and you telling me Ashley hasn't done a whole bunch of shit that she shouldn't be proud of over some gold coins? Okay, I know an evil ass elf when I see one. Okay, now listen, y'all. Ashley goes on to tell us, well, and goes on to tell Giselle that, you know, Deborah told me that, you know, she was hearing Wendy and Candace talking about her, calling her vermin, rodent, you know, the help. And she came over there and she said, you know, say it to my face. You know, I'm right here. Say it to my face. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, you know, Kiana hits Deborah. And this is what she told me. And then Candace picks up a bottle and tries to hit Deborah. And it just goes wild after that. She tried to pin all of this shit on Candace. She tried to pin all this shit on Candace. And then you see, and then you see uh uh like you know Giselle basically agreeing with this shit, but we ain't surprised because we all know Giselle ain't shit. That's why she continues to have swelling legs every you know July through December. You know, her legs swell up like turkey, like turkey legs. You know, like one of them ham hocks, you know, and that's and that's to repay you for all the evil that you put in this world, Giselle. Because you ain't no good person. And then she's up here echoing the statements that, that Ashley said. I'm up here like, but you wasn't even there. And see, we have cows, big ass, sitting here talking about, you know, well, if you talk, if you was talking about her, then, you know, you got to be prepared for what she does. Cow. Cow sweetie shut the fuck up okay we don't care what you have to say bitch you like bitch you're coming uh, you're bitch you're coming up to a whole motherfucking televised event dressed like macy gray okay bitch you're coming like bitch you're coming to a whole televised bravo event that's a part of a magazine drop dressed like macy gray And you want to sit here and tell us about being prepared? How about you be prepared to actually look like you are a stylist? How about you be prepared to actually style the one that you're supposed to be styling? You too busy with everybody else name in your mouth and trying to get a scene. And you shouldn't, when you really, should, instead of, you know, thinking about what you were going to say, because we all know that you pre-planned what you were going to say in this moment, because you don't like, you don't like anybody that Giselle don't like, because you're one of those purse gays. And I went, look, one thing about it, y'all, one thing about it and two things for sure, I don't like a purse gay, especially when they in their mid thirties to late forties and fifties and shit. Like I ain't gonna be walking around as some bitch's accessory. Don't you? Don't you be walking around with me around your motherfucking shoulder like a like you know like some type of Michael Kors bag. At some point, you got to get your own identity, bitch. You got to get your own identity, cow, and shut up. Stay out of stay out of the business. Let the women handle this. It's your big ass in that in that little in that little ass head wrap, looking like you was about to suffer a fucking stroke. Y'all, if, if if Cal didn't look like he was about to dive into somebody's pool and do a pool and pull do a damn pool, damn uh uh formation or you know, performance, I was like, why does he have that headpiece on? What is it giving? It, what is what is it giving? <laughs> I was like, I can't tell if this nigga trying to look like Macy Gray or Jennifer Lewis, but at the end of the day, I wouldn't trust any motherfucking fashion advice from Cal. A uh uh Marquise uh uh a, a purse gay are one of those one of those messy ass gay men that hang and cling on to women in the entertainment industry, preferably uh, you know preferably the reality realm of women, and they basically hold a purse, they basically do their hair, do their makeup, and be messy as fuck about their business too, and also try to interject their opinion into some shit and get some screen time whenever they can. So they out here, they like they try to be in the shadow of this woman when they need to get their big ass out somewhere and go actually get a real job. Okay. I can't stand, I can't stand the purse, y'all. And if you're gonna do it, and if you're gonna be the bitch friend and you're gonna do her makeup and her hair too, just shut up and keep your opinions to yourself. Just be a friend. You don't have to talk. 
on the on the show. You we don't need nobody. Nobody is asking for Cal's opinion. And the crazy thing about it is, when Cal decided to give his opinion, y'all, it got so. Let tell me in my line, y'all. It got awkward as fuck. When Cal decided to say that, like Ashley was looking at him like, mm, okay, and they, and they like and and everybody just dissipate. Like you thought that you what, like what did you think, Cal? Did you think that they was gonna like? <laughs> did you think they was gonna like big up you, girl? Did you think they was gonna like actually get into the conversation with you, bitch? You're not a part of the cast. You're not that girl, literally, figuratively, or you know, or spiritually. Looking like looking like a fucking overstuffed ass fucking Macy ass gray. I was like, what? I was like, try to walk away and not some old. Y'all, y'all remember Macy Gray made that <laughs> made that motherfucking thing in song that J as told by Junior. The grass is green on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me that was not what Cal was giving. Tell me I'm lying, bitch. You can't. I know I'm telling the truth okay now and then like but but before all of that had happened real quick but before you know cal decided to give his unsolicited opinion like um what was what was so surprising to me is how you know sharice decided to you know try to try to make a point to say Candace, Candace was doing too much when she grabbed a watch. I can't believe that Candace grabbed. I'm sorry. Hold on. This is my Sharice wig. You know, that shit just be, you know, Sharice be like, you know, at the end of the day, Candace just really grabbed that water bottle. And I'm just like, what is going on? You know, what is happening right now? Because I just don't understand what's going on like we're better than that can you believe like what were you gonna do with that water bottle like what are you gonna do with that water bottle like what are we gonna do with that champagne bottle like what are you gonna do with that like you gonna do something with that candace like and then you know we have ashley big-headed ass like really just gassing this shit up making it seem as if candace is out here just picking up water bottles and threatening hoes who ain't doing shit to her like like this big ass man named Deborah is not sitting here trying to fling a drink at her. And one thing about a Deborah who has something in their hand trying to throw it at you in a fast motion, it can come at you a hundred miles per hour with a whiplash thereafter. Okay, because the Deborah, like I told y'all before, has a strength of 10 men. I learned that from Zumba food. Okay, I'm just letting y'all know that. Okay. Also, y'all, please like the video. Y'all, like YouTube is doing the bitch dirty. They ain't, they ain't letting y'all know that I'm out here on, on live right now. They ain't letting y'all know that I'm out here, you know, grinding right now. They is not letting y'all know any of this. Y'all, y'all just always got to catch a bitch at the, in the afterplay. Don't y'all hate that shit? Cause I know I do. Y'all need, y'all need to write to the, to the, um, to the Congress. Let them know that a, a bitch is being targeted. I deserve to be, you know, to be in the algorithm. I deserve for people to have notifications that I'm live because they do want to hear me talk this shit. And I really do think, think that it's some trickery afoot. Okay. Because y'all, I promise y'all, I like now, now look at me and look like y'all been on this channel for a while, right? Why the fuck am I getting red pill, you know, Manosphere videos being recommended to me? Why? Why the fuck? Why the fuck is Tommy Sotomayor being recommended to me? I'm confused. I look, this shit made me bring out a Baltimore. Now I'm confused. Like, I'm confused. Like, what the fuck is going on here? But y'all don't want to give my like recommend my videos and let people know I'm going live and I'm actually and they and they actually related to the stuff that I'm talking about. They actually look at this shit I'm talking about. YouTube do better. It's only a month after Black History Month. Shit. All right. 
All right, y'all. My bad. <laughs> Got to catch my breath. All right. So, so after, you know, Sharice brings that up, it, it cuts to the confessional with Ashley. And Ashley's sitting here talking about, you know, you know, um, Deborah is just, you know, she told me that Candace was you just saying all of these things to her. And, you know, just sometimes, you know, just Candace, you just can't hit to the can't hit to the white meat, Candace. Like sometimes you just can't go low blow with everybody, Candace. You just can't do that, Candace. And it's just like, uh, it's just it's our second time. And I just want to reiterate to you, bitches. Once again, Candace never hit below the belt with, with Monique. I just really want to reiterate that for y'all because y'all love to keep on saying that. Okay? Y'all love to keep saying that Candace was out here hitting below the belt. But the time that she got assaulted, she never hit below the belt. She never got down and dirty with Monique like she really could have. She never did that. And I really hate that. Ashley is out here trying to paint this picture and really villainize Candace for something that you and your friend plotted. Because what we not going to do, bitch, is act like your big headed ass did not formulate this plan with your friend. You always is in some shit and you always got that nasty ass smirk on your face. See, this is, you know, y'all, this is like, you know, this is why. This is why we should have left Ashley under the bridge with her mama. See this, like this is this is what happened when you put under the bridge people above the bridge. See when God made uh when when God gave it to that person to write that song called Bridge Over Troubled Waters, he never said take a bitch from under the bridge and take him and put him inside of a real housewives of Potomac. See, we should have left you under the bridge with those troubled waters because all you do is bring trouble and strife wherever you go, Ashley. Damn it. I can't stand this hoe. I oh y'all really I cannot stand Ashley's oblong headed ass. I can't stand the hoe. I really can't. And you full of shit. You like you you all you're trying to do is backtrack and trying to put this shit on Candace because you know that it's going to look hella crazy for you because this fight got really serious. And not only that, your friend jumped your friends jumped Kiana, and we're not talking about that enough. Your friends jumped Kiana. Kiana got jumped that night, baby. Fuck what we're talking about, Candace. Your two friends jumped Kiana. Your manly face friend named Deborah and your dry haired ass friend, we don't even remember her motherfucking name, but she had on that gold ass, she had on that silver or yellow or gold outfit with that nasty ass beauty star ponytail and she snatched Karen's hair. That y'all ain't shit. And you ain't, sh you deserve to get your ass beat. You deserve to get your ass beat. You deserve to get your ass beat.